where am I? No. So I'm, so I'm here with the, the guys from I Film London, taking a, a back seat and being interviewed for a, cha for a change. I'm here with the brains of the Operation James. So James, um, tell me a bit about I Film and what you're doing and, and where you're going at the moment. Um, basically, we are a web-based channel, um, iFilmLondon.com. Um, we're a two-man team. Obviously, we don't have quite the resources as yourself or, um, and other individuals within boxing. Um, we tour the country filming shows, covering press conferences. Uh, boxing's about 70% of our work. And... Yeah, my work has brought me in contact with you today. People do wonder where you get all your money from, Coogan. Where, where, how, how do you, how do you fund your operation, and how does it all work? Um, to be honest, I don't feel re relevant to really answer that question today in front of your camera. So, I'm going to choose not to answer that question, uh, as Quentin Tarantino did to um, Christian Guru Murphy the other day. Okay. Um, Okay. Um, a small percentage of our money comes from revenue and advertisements. Um, some more stuff comes from um, stuff away from boxing, um, such as corporate filming, other things to do with just general I film business, to be honest. Okay. What, what are your most successful videos that you've had so far, boxing, boxing, boxing related? Wise, um, that's a good question. I'd say probably on view-wise, it would probably be Klitschko and uh, Chisora clip. Would that be right? Yeah. Probably uh, probably one of our biggest hitters, yeah. Um, Jack Wilshere interview as well, away from boxing. It's been quite quite a big hitting clip. That was the one that that was the one that you did, wasn't it? When Wilshere said that he'd never leave Arsenal? Is that the one? That's the one. Wilshere scored yesterday the winner in the eighty sixth minute. Um, pledged his future to Arsenal Football Club on iFilm London. Yes, that's true. You can see it. Okay, now there is a there's a um, a bit of a buzz about the interviews that you do with um, Adam Booth. I mean, tell me a bit about the chemistry that you have with Adam. Yeah, to be honest, before I um, first interviewed him, I was quite frightened too because he comes across a little bit how people normally portray him to be a bit arrogant, a bit whatever. I can't swear on this, can we? A bit smug. But um, no, we've sort of had a love hate relationship. Um, don't really know what he's going to come out with in the interviews. He doesn't really know what I'm going to come out with in the interviews, which. It makes for compelling viewing. So, yeah, it's, it's just a bit of, as they call, banter. What's been the high point of, of your boxing journey so far? Um, do you know what? It's quite cliche to say this, but there's been so many things. Um, are you talking event-wise or are you talking uh, just... Anything, scoops that you've got, people you've spoken to, highlight interviews, that kind of stuff. Um... I don't know, I'd, I'd say the, the, all the stuff from Hay and Chisora, that was quite, where it was so high profile and we was there from day one, right and literally until everyone went home from um, uh, Upton Park that night. Uh, that was quite good. Uh, Froch Boutte was great. Hatton's return, even though it didn't uh, end how he wanted it and the fans wanted it to end, it was still a, you know, a great night in Manchester. Um, there's so many moments uh, over the time that we've been doing stuff so it's hard to pick one to be honest or James what was your I don't know I'd just like to thank my guru and inspiration Daniel Cadman 80 as well for all his help um, that he's given us so far um, yeah going back going back to what what you do and how you do it who, who who are your main competitors and is it quite competitive with you and certain certain personalities on the internet I wouldn't say it's a competitive I think everyone's doing a great job to help and highlight British boxing, to be honest. We don't really see people as competition. I might sit down and watch some of the other guys work. Um, notably, don't watch too much of your stuff, but yeah, some other bits and pieces. <laughs> now, Coogan, this is the most, this is, this is the most sensible that I've had you for, for some time, which is, which is nice, makes a nice change. But tell me a little bit about how you got into boxing. I mean, I, we see you in the background with Ricky Hatton stuff, different videos and stuff, you know, where you, you worked as, as security for him, is that right? Yeah, I was his um, mind of security, whatever you want to say, call it. Um, when he fought Manny Pacquiao, so I was out there in Vegas with him for two months, and um, yeah, which was quite an experience. Met a lot of people out there and uh, made some contacts out there, and um, yeah, it's sort of. But th there was a long gap between that and I film London. There was about maybe a year and a half, two year gap between that and the start of I film London. So it's not really linked, to be honest, because um, we did really haven't covered as many of the Hatton shows as we because you'd think that was a natural link do you know what I mean to start with the Hatton shows uh, we did one and then we didn't do one for a long time until Ricky's comeback really so um, the thing we're going to work on to cover more promoters shows whether it be at your call in front of 500 people or whether it be at the O2 in front of 
20,000 people. You do get everywhere. You've covered the Frank Warren press conferences, the Eddie Hearn press conferences. Do you get labelled as saying that you support one over the other? Uh, we did get that at the start, yeah. We had a lot of people because um, when we started doing stuff with Frank and Eddie from day one, uh, a lot of people, uh, because Frank was putting on more shows at the time, you know, people were saying that, oh, you know, you Frank Warren's people, blah, blah. And it's never been the case. The truth of it is that we've always been just independent and wanted to work with more promoters. So, you know, and as the two years have gone on, you know, we've done stuff with Maloney, uh, Dave Caldwell, Mickey Elliott, Spencer Fearon, Steve Goodwin, Miranda Carter. You know, it's just, it's not all about one specific promoter. So I hope now it's sort of got to a stage where people realise that we do go across, across the board. Yeah, just as well, we were at the start working with a lot of the smaller promoters, but because their shows tend not to be, for the want of a better word, global events, people might not have been searching the stuff and necessarily finding it. So it might have been our work with Frank Warren or Eddie Hearn that brought us to a lot of people's attention, shall we say. Yeah, sure. And then what does the future hold? I mean, I know that, Coogan, you've been out to America and done some videos. Is that is that part of the future? Um, Coogan's been in America. I've been to Scotland. Um, so, yeah, between us, we're going to keep <laughs> on them. You've got, to, you've got it covered. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I mean, the equivalent of what we do here is Ellie Setback in America and who's phenomenal for the amount of videos and the amount of stuff that he does out there. Um, I don't think we could ever really, well I'm saying that, it'll be very difficult to go over there and because we don't live over there and it will be very cost effective, it will be ridiculous to, uh, to get, get over there unless we decided to move over there and decided like for a year we'll go and see what it's like if we could ever do that. But um, What do you mean like criminal records and visas you might not be allowed in? Are you talking to me? No, but oh, seriously, it's um, that that is would be a step because I'm not saying we've done everything in British boxing because there's so many fighters that we still haven't interviewed that you know not because that we we just haven't our paths haven't crossed but going over to America is definitely something that you know we'd think about not in the immediate future but long term yes. Okay, last one. Just wrap this up. In British boxing, who haven't you interviewed that you want to interview? <laughs> Can be past or present. Um. Um, Three. Bruno. Two. Okay. And I'll stick with uh, Daniel Cadman 80 again. Always you've good you've talker. That's all right. I'll no, have him it's again. Be someone else. Someone, someone from the yeah, past. Mm. Past or present? I'd, I'd have to say, even though we have had Prince Nazim on iFilm, I haven't personally interviewed him. So, yeah, it would be, be a great honour to get uh, have a bit of a banner with Naz again. All right, okay. Oh, and one day, hopefully, Tris Dixon. That's it. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> really appreciate it. Get involved with all the best boxing banter at our forum, and that's forum.boxingnewsonline.net.